got a new solar panel here. They sent me a solar panel. Now, who are they? They are X Star. It's a new company. Well, I don't know how new they are, but it's new to me and it might be new to you. X Star. Now, it is it's a hundred watt solar panel. Foldable solar panel. See what's in it. There's a box out there. Okay, now I've already opened it, obviously. Came in a nice bubble wrap. Let's see. Okay, it's not gonna pop. Bubble wrap. Fun. Yeah, um, this is the solar panel. It's foldable. It has a magnet right here, so it stays closed. I had it outside. I was gonna set it up out there, and somebody took my spot. <laughs> it was out of the sun. So I'm gonna show you here what we got. It's the same thing. I used it outside, and I'll tell you about it. It's got these. So that you can lean it, so that you can lean it towards the sun. We've seen these, I haven't, I showed you another one, I showed you the Okmo um, solar panel. It looks really the same and it's almost as if sometimes they just put a new name on it. It's the truth. This is almost exactly like the Oakmo solar panel. It has, in here is the cord. It's attached to here. And when the solar panel is up, let's get this out. It gets plugged into the Jackery. It goes in there. Or a blue eddy. Or it goes in a blue eddy. The blue eddy goes in the back. Or an Oakmo. The Oakmo goes in the front. Yeah, once you start, I've been playing around with these different systems and they send me things. They're pretty much the same. But I will say for this one, it's a little different and I'll show you why. But I did test out with the my Jackery. It was pulling in 80 watts. So this is a 100 watt solar panel. So, but I was getting like 80, 85 at one point when the direct sun was coming up. Now, granted, I'm in the winter, so the sun is always at an angle. It's not like it's summer and the sun is beating right down straight sort of at an angle you're not going to get the same amount in the winter and you really do have to kind of uh, put these at an angle to reach it but i will say that's pretty good because the oakmo solar panel that they sent me was only pulling in about 68 62 to 68. one thing i have noticed with these solar panels after you start using a few of them and you start testing them out that they do pull in a lot in the beginning and after after a few months i don't know why it kind of starts decreasing a little bit i have no clue if this is one is going to do it but i know my okmo one did i know that my renogy fold out one did i know that my solar panel on my roof did and i know that paul's blue eddy they out over time they diminish just a little bit of wattage that goes into our power stations, our power banks. I will tell you why this one is so different. It comes with a nice extension cord. Look at this. This is a nice extension cord. This is long and this already is long. So I could totally park in the shade 
and I could pull this out in the sun without having to buy an extension cord like I did before with my Renogy that fold out a soft solar panel. Yeah, I had to buy a uh, an extension cord for that. Now they sent me these other cords. I looked at them. They're adapters for different kinds of solar connectors. I don't need these. Um, I use MC4 and that's what I use. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with those, but this is the little baby here. This is a USB charger. It came with this. I'm, it's cool, it's cool. Not totally impressed, but it is nice. Let's see, let's see if I can get this out. Okay, what's in here? Now they do have one of these. This is a cigarette lighter and I can use the cigarette lighter for this. It's a USB. This is more like, I'm gonna call this an inverter. There must be a controller in here too, but this is an inverter. This is nothing more than an inverter. There is no battery in here. This is very lightweight. So I tested this out. I could use this with my um, cigarette lighter when I drive and I could plug phones or whatever needs to into here using this. Okay. Cool. Or I can plug this into the solar panel. This is plugged into the solar panel. Now, as long as this is pulling in wattage from the sun, energy from the sun, the sun, I will say, I know I say it a lot. The sun is a generator. This is not a generator. This only, and this is not a generator. The sun is the generator, it's generating energy. This is pulling it through and this is bringing it out through. But the sun is the generator. If I had, if there was a lithium ion battery in here that would be storing energy, this would be, there's, with this system, there's no storing anything, it's just bringing it through. So I tried this, yes, it does power up my phone or anything else USB, but as soon as this goes out, this is done. This does not work, it's not storing energy. So it's cool, but Mm, I most of us use um, power banks or or we have battery packs you know like acid battery packs and we use controllers and inverters this is nothing more than kind of an inverter yeah now let's see I have to I can't even This won't even turn on unless this is in the sun. So, but the instructions in here, this is not very, um, never good instructions. What it does is this panel lights up when there are different, there are different connections here, plugs. And you just, what this is, you cycle through each one. That's about it. So this is pretty lightweight. There's no battery in here. It's different. I really was like, wow, okay, that's different. I've never seen this in before. I'm not 100% um, impressed, but I am impressed with the solar panel. This is a typical foldable solar panel with nice magnets on it. So when it closes, it stays closed. Not too heavy. Nice long plug, I like that. Nice long plug. This is eight millimeter. I will mention if I'm gonna compare this because it looks so similar to the Okmo. The Okmo was green and this is blue. The Okmo had a connector that had everything. It had eight millimeter, seven millimeter, five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, and a couple different connectors. It came with, it was multiple, and you just cho chose which one and put it in. And it's like, a, it had like, it was like, like hair. It had this and had this and had this, yeah. 
wasn't as long though and yeah this one is just for an eight millimeter which is great for my jackeries and bluetti use eight millimeter too x-tar this is an x-tar brand let me fold this back up would i buy this probably i mean i would buy it i mean i bought my renegy um soft solar I would buy this. X Star 100 watt solar panel with an inverter that you can use for USB to power up your whatever, but usually your phones, phones and cameras, things like that. Now, this, <laughs> I thought about this. Now, this would be perfect for somebody who doesn't know much about solar. You just put this out, you plug this in, and you start powering up your phones. But this would be for somebody who really doesn't know much about solar or how to use it or knows anything about these wonderful power banks. Now, am I happy with Jackery? Sure, but I will probably get, I'm more, I'm more happy with Oakmo or Blue Eddy. Uh, Jackery, Jackery is, what Jackery is doing, they're kind of like, they're leading the market right now, but I think they're probably about ready to fall, only because they don't reach out too much, and some people have been starting to have some problems with their Jackeries, unlike Blue Eddy. So if I was going to, if I was gonna ever, and plus I like the fact that the Blue Eddy is flat, this is not flat. And Bluetti has nice handles on it, but this, the Jackery, this, I can't set anything on it. I can't, you know, it's just, it's an odd shape on top. Will I buy a Jackery ever again? No, no, I will not. Um, I just won't. I'll probably buy Bluetti or Okmo. So this is my review of the X-Star. It's a nice solar panel, but in my opinion, it is very similar to all the other ones, the fold-outs. Yeah, it's just very similar. They added this in. So, um, am I getting paid to do this review? No. They sent me the solar panel, and I always appreciate that, sure. But I give an honest review. When I review anything, I'm not sponsored by anyone. When I, when I do a review, I don't get paid for it. I honestly don't. There are some companies I like better than others. And the companies thus far that I have done reviews for is dear for me. I love their stool and I love their heated jacket. Did you not like that? Oh my gosh. That was great. And some of you actually commented you were going to buy it for your husband while he's at work. Oh yeah. It's well worth the money. It keeps you warm. Also like through night, and I'm gonna review another flashlight in just a minute here, but I wanna get started with the actual discussion about quartzite and what we're gonna need for quartzite, what we're gonna do when we're in quartzite for the meetup. We need to know that. And just even if you're not gonna go for the meetup or you're uh, not a part, oh, this is for the Facebook group. This minivan leaves this nomad life. The meetup is for the face group. So if you're not part of the face group, go join it on Facebook. But we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about quartzite. What is needed? If you're new to boondocking, what do you need? And what are some of the things around there that you're going to be able to use while you're there on BLM land near quartzite? Then after that, I'm going to do a review of another through night flashlight. This one's a little different, so don't go away. I'll make it quick. These flashlights, they're kind of like, in a way, they're sort of the same. They're just in different um, design and of uh, different things that they will do and different needs that you will have. But I will say, and I'll say it again, through night is leading in flashlights. I really like them, great customer service. So let's get started with Quartzite. Okay, let's talk about Quartzite, because I know y'all getting excited. I know I am, how about you? Yeah, it's gonna be a 
wall and it's getting very, very close. Right, but we want to give you some heads up if you've never been there on things that are available and some of the rules. I want to mention that this is a meetup and we're going to meet. There is nothing going to be um, organized, totally organized. We're just going to let everybody know our coordinates, where we are, so that you can park near us and we all get to meet each other from the Facebook group. So if you haven't joined Minivan Lisa's Snowman Life Facebook group, please go do it because that's where the coordinates are gonna be when the time comes. And it'll probably be, what, a couple days before that we'll release them, so be on the lookout for them. But we still got, what, about four weeks? Uh, five weeks? Four or five, yep. Oh, a little bit longer than that. Yeah, we've got four, almost seven weeks. So what's good that we're going to start talking about this. That's right. At least you'll have an idea of where you're heading and, right. and where you'll find us. Right. Now, what do you got to say about Quartzite? I'll tell you what, if you want to camp, there, there is no excuse for not finding a place to camp around Quartzite. I'm, I'm not talking about the meetup now. I'm talking about just in general. If before or after the meetup, you want to go somewhere else, oh my gosh, there are LTVA uh, areas. Which some is? Long-term visitors area. Okay. And there are, of course, the BLM, Bureau of Land Management areas. And that's where we're going to be in one of those. Now there's Dome Rock and there's High Jolly and there's Scadden Wash and then there's Plumosa. Mm -hmm. So those are the different four areas of BLM land that have names on them. Right, right. Around Quartzite, really close to Quartzite. And where we plan to be is Plumosa. Yes, I like Plumosa Some, best. And we're not uh, letting the cat out of the bag here because the Plumosa BLM area is huge. I can't tell you exactly how many acres it is, but yeah. it is huge. And we're not sure where we're going to be because come January, we were there, what, uh, five, six weeks ago uh, at Plumosa Road and it was empty. It was almost eerie. And if you saw some of the videos from uh, us uh, staying there, you can see what we mean. It was just us and the coyotes. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's all we saw, basically. Yeah. But uh, it'll be uh, Plumosa Road, which is about six miles north of Quartzite. Yeah. It is up Highway 95, about six yeah. miles outside of Quartzite. Yeah. Well, let's let everybody know what they're going to need to bring. What Make sure that you bring things. And I want to talk about, because I think we can cover a lot of this just by talking about the five C's. You got combustion. You're going to need some fire with you. You're going to need containers, whether that be uh, something to boil your water with or carry things when carry water with, things like that. You're going to need cordage. If you want to put tarps up, it's always good to have good cordage. You're going to need cutting, which is, a, you know, bring some knives with you, something that you can cut something with. And what was the other C was coverings. And let's include our bodies. You're going to need some warm clothing. You're going to need some work gloves. Make sure you bring hats. You don't want to get stuck in the sun, right? That's right. And you need to cover your body with sunscreen or sunblock. Absolutely. Yeah. That uh, desert sun, when it comes up over the mountains uh, to the east, of course, it doesn't take long to warm up. It will get very cold at night. And when I say very cold, I'm talking about it could get down into the 30s and uh, it's very chilly. But once that sun comes up, uh, it's a very intense yeah. sun. It'll get very warm and uh, be very, very nice. But you need protection and the wind and the, when the wind comes in it could come that week who knows or we might well if we all pray really hard we won't get any wind that week but if we do that means we're going to get pelted with sand and dust right and so you want to cover your face maybe by get a shemog something like that um something a hat girls cover your hair yeah why do you mention just girls lee yeah maybe, <laughs> you know. Anyway. Now, what else do you need to bring? I'm going to suggest if you're going to be there the full week, 
I want you to bring two packs of wood, two boxes of wood, because we all need to contribute to wood. And we all, once we get there, we can help build a really large pit. So bring some work gloves, because we're going to be moving rocks. I don't know how, depending on how many people are going to be there, we might need to build two big fire pits. Could I be. don't know. I don't know. Could You're going to need a chair to sit on, make sure it's comfortable. And uh, let's see. We find that a table is very handy. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be large, but just something that you can set outside your rig and cook on or set your water uh, container on. Uh, a table comes in very handy. I don't have a table. <laughs> I really don't. I had a table and I got rid of it because when I pull my bins out, I can just put things on my bin and I always cook inside my bin anyway. So that is a good thing. You know, most everybody has a table. I just particularly, it's one less thing for me to carry, but yeah. I do have one. So I we, know you we do. share. We do share. I use this table some, sometimes. Okay. All right, let's see. You know, did we get to lighting yet? Well, we did the through critically night. Critically important. We're going to show you next the through night um, review on a new flashlight, but you've certainly seen quite a few of the reviews. So I suggest, when I say flashlight, now I'm just going to say through night because I like this company so oh, much. They make great. As a yes, matter of fact, do. if I just reach down into my pocket here. Whoop, whoop. He's got the through <laughs> night. He's got a through I night. I love this little thing. Oh, yeah. I really do. And you're going to need one for the campfire to get back to your to your rig. Absolutely. Yeah. If you trip and fall on those rocks, you're not going to be a happy camper. I can guarantee it. I think, here's my thing. I think you should all get a little heater because it's going to be cold. Because here's my deal. If everybody just turns on their car, please, if you're going to use your car, please don't park too close to me. I don't want to feel like I'm in a um, truck stop. Because if we all did that in the morning, we turned on our our heaters, our cars. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not going to be fun. It's not going to be fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, pack it in, pack it out. Everything you bring in, you want to make sure that you take out. I think a couple tarps is handy. I like to bring a couple oh, tarps. Oh, they sure are. They sure are. Absolutely. I put a tarp in front of my um, my pull-out, slide-out, the door that slides out. Mm -hmm. And I put one in front of there. It's just, just kind of like a little carpet. That way, it's just I can take my shoes off and lay it down on there. Yeah. And you can get a broom out. I carry a broom. You can get a yeah. broom out and sweep it off each morning if you yeah. care to. Yeah. It, it really makes things uh, yeah. cleaner and neater, and it, it really comes in handy. Right. But do be aware, uh, there is no uh, garbage facility right on Plumosa's area. There is no water. There is no electrical hookup. There's, it's just bare desert. So kind of think about that, that if you were, if what do you need? Are you going to want a walking stick? Are you going to, you definitely have to have a flashlight, no doubt about it. Uh, but a walking stick or uh, uh, I have bear spray, Lee has bear spray. Uh, not that there's any bears out there, but they can come out, come in handy for any kind of wild animal if well, necessary. Well, let's talk garbage, um, Paul. Good idea. You mentioned about the garbage that there's a there is a refuse um, center, and it's a refuse station. It's open from Sunday to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They're closed. Those are winter hours. Now it's about halfway from Plamosa to Quartzsite, and it's open. I think it open at 7 and it closes at around 2 30. so right. what i do is because let's face it i use the bucket and i poop goodness <laughs> i poop <laughs> and so i don't have a garbage mm -hmm. just as, to, to go over at the park and put my put my bag there so what i carry is a five pound five gallon bucket white bucket and i have a gamma lid with a gamma lid, and you can get those at Home Depot or Lowe's, and with a gamma lid, you can put something in there, shut the gamma lid, and it's you don't get any odor coming out. This is my system. Then what I do is I wait until, like on a Sunday, as soon as it opens up, I'll drive into the refuse center, and I'll dump everything. Yeah. So coordinate 
your dumping. Now, let's say you're going to leave, you're done, you're going to leave, and you've got, maybe you've got a couple tarps that, uh, you know, they, you just don't want to keep carrying them around, you want to get rid of them, don't just leave them. Coordinate your leaving was when the, the refuse center is open, and then you can leave, drop off what you want, and then head on I-10 or go on your very way. But what's your system of pooping? I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, I he do. Pulps too. We all, everybody poops. Oh, I, I certainly hope so. <laughs> anyway, um, I have just a regular five gallon bucket. There's a name for it that escapes me. I got it on Amazon, of course, but it also has a lid on it. Under you can raise the lid, which latches very nicely. We I'll tell you, it's behind us, right? Well, as a matter of fact, yeah. there's nothing in it right now. But I took care of that earlier. I never smell anything in this rig, so it's almost like a gamma lid. Well, and it's very comfortable because right underneath <laughs> that lid is a regular little toilet seat, and. It, you're going to need I never that, use folks. It. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, gals and guys, both, you're also going to need some kind of a container. You figure out what you might want, unless Lee wants to get more specific. But what? you'll need that for urine, also. So let you know. I, oh yeah. I, I of course, as Lee does, I line my five-gallon bucket with uh, trash bags. But well, yeah. yeah, I try not well, to I use that so. for the liquid. Well, no. Um, I try to use a bottle because I don't like to get that bag inside the yeah. five-gallon bucket all full of liquid. And it just makes a, a mess, I think. So. They say when the liquid, the urine mixes with poop, it smells worse. But I've yet to find if I'm sitting on my bucket. I don't use my five-gallon buckets too high. Yeah, I'm short. I use another little bucket with a little seat on it. But um, sometimes I urinate when I'm doing number two, too. Well, you can't help it, I suppose. <laughs> I know. It happens. Ooh. Confession time. Confession. But I do have what I use is a, a wide mouth um, container. You can find them at Walmart. They're clear. But you gave me your, um, the last one I dumped it, my old one. But you gave me what was it? Peanut. <laughs> it was it was peanut uh, full of peanut butter filled pretzels. pretzels that I bought at Costco. I love those things. But it ha it has a beautiful <laughs> wide mouth on it, yeah. and it was perfect for uh, yeah. for Lee's needs. Yeah. Um, of course, I don't need anything that large. Uh, not to get too personal here, but uh, <laughs> he uses tea. Um, it's an container? iced tea, uh, uh, a uh, pre-mixed iced tea container or a lemonade. I have a lemonade and an iced oh, tea, okay. and it works out perfect for the guys, I think. Yeah. So you want to have your containers to go to the bathroom. And I don't know, you know, you're not supposed to dump your urine out on cactuses, things like that, but a lot of us, a lot of people do. Um, and, of course, you know, at night, I suppose you can go behind a tree or cactus and... And if you're up, but just whatever, be careful. Yeah, because you're not <laughs> supposed to. This is a thing you're not supposed to do. That. Let's talk about some rules on BLM land. Well, first of all, oh, on on BLM. Well, uh, you're supposed to be in control of your dogs. I know that. It doesn't say you have to have them on the leash, but you have to be in control of them, whatever that means. So. If you're bringing a pet, please be in control. We always keep Abby on a leash. She's on a leash at all times. On uh, Yeah. We don't just let her run willy-nilly. And, and I don't like that. That's for her protection uh, yeah. as well as anybody walking by because of the coyotes and other critters that are out there. What about the cats that on our Facebook group, they lost their cats? Right. Right. <laughs> they and how traumatic cats. is that? And there's coyotes out there, and they will eat little dogs and little cats. Yep, absolutely. They'll hunt them down. So don't, it's important not to leave your pets unattended. Yeah. If they're going to be right. outside, make sure you're out there with them. They're on a leash, and you're you're watching around. And yeah. 
we make it sound a little bit more scary than it should be maybe but it's very well, there's important coy there's coyote out there absolutely yeah yeah and there i will say that i've noticed that abby does it too and i've talked about dogs out there dogs are very protective of the area they're new out there they don't know what's going on they'll say no is that's their master and this is the rig and they're going to protect it no matter what you're just walking by they don't they treat you and they'll bark at you um if they're off leash they may come up to you they may charge at you i'm just giving you heads up that if Abby wasn't on a leash, she would do the same thing. I used to complain like, oh my gosh, you know, these dogs out here. But Abby Abby has the same, it must be a thing with dogs, when they're boondocking dogs, <laughs> that they're very protective well, of their masters their, and their rigs. They consider that their home. Right. And uh, not that Abby especially gets uh, ferocious or anything like that. To be quite honest, when Abby runs up to someone, she's hoping that they pet her. That's what she's looking for more often than not. But for any dog, I mean, it, Lee, you walk all the time and you've run into dogs and had some real incidents that are a yeah. little bit scary. And you when they run up to you and they don't always appear to want to play right. all the time. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you got to be in control of your dog. Another thing, too, is you can only stay for 14 days on BLM land. And let's talk about that, how it works with the host. Because when it's really going to be busy, when you guys are going to be there, there will be a host. When you pull into Plamosa, there'll be a host right there. Right so, at right at the entrance. You can't yes. you can't miss it. It'll there'll be signage there, and that's where you pull in and you, you spend ten minutes to fill out a, a yeah. little form. They fill it out at least in duplicate, if not triplicate. They give you a copy that you throw on the dash of yeah. your vehicle to show yeah. when you got there and so forth. And to be quite honest, I have never seen, whether it's a forest ranger, a, uh, uh, what else are they called? There's two or three different kinds of uh, uh, enforcement people that are around. I've never seen one, but that doesn't mean that they, they won't be around. Oh, they're there. Yeah. Yeah. I know on BLM land um, in Lake Havasu, there's also Lake Havasu. So in Lake Havasu, they, they, there was a host there and nobody knew there was. And they ended up kicking everybody off because everybody was just staying over 14 days. Don't stay over 14 days. Stay 14 days and then move on. Now you need to move 25 miles out of the area and go spend 14 days there. Then come back. I mean, yeah. if that's what you want to do. If you want to. Yeah. 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 There's also Bows that's close by. You can also park at Bows. It's 20, not 25 miles away, but there's also BLM land there. And 25 miles away, you could go to, you could go to Lake Havasu. You can go to Lake yeah. Havasu. There's Craggy you can go Wash in Lake Havasu. You can look that up, Craggy Wash. And you could go south to Yuma, to the Yuma yes, area. Yuma has BLM land, lots of there is BLM land. Tons of BLM land all right. around the uh, area that we'll be in. And you won't have any trouble if you want to stay longer and and uh, go to another place for another yeah. couple of weeks. Won't be any trouble at all. Yeah. Now, in actual quartzite, there is a really nice laundromat, Main Street laundromat, and mm -hmm. they've got a restaurant, they've got showers. I think they're nine, maybe ten dollars. They might move it up a little bit. And there's a really good laundromat there. Across the street is the Roadrunner, and that's a market, a little bit more expensive, but the nearest Walmart is in Parker, and that's about 30, 35 minutes away, and it's a really dreary drive there's the landscape i don't really like going up there too much sometimes i have to go but um we're gonna really plan to get everything we need before we go right and yeah so we don't have to go into parker Absolutely. and there is no car wash in quartzite none no car wash you have to go into parker if you want to wash your car so at least unless somebody uh, surprised us i heard a rumor that uh the gentleman at the laundromat was thinking about putting out a uh, car wash, a 25 cent do-it-yourself thing. But we were there just a number of weeks ago and he hadn't done anything yet. I didn't yeah. ask him about it, but uh, so yeah, you probably won't find a car wash in yeah. Quartzsite. Now I don't know if Quiet Times is still open to get packages if you want to order something from Amazon or if a family member needs to send you something. It's called Quiet Times. There's a, <laughs> there's a sign out that always says they're for sale, but they never sell it. And, but I do believe they do have, um, what is that called? Something delivery at the post office. Um, 
general delivery general delivery mm -hmm. they do accept general delivery at their post office there's usually a long line yeah i'm telling I, you courtside is bopping it's going to be it's going to be bopping the laundromat you're going to be meeting people going seeing people the same people there's class a's there's just class c's there's you, you will it'll, everybody it'll be an education you'll yes. see every possible method of camping yes, from yes. rvs to tents to teepees yeah. to uh, a blanket on the ground and right. sleeping in, underneath the uh, open sky. Now, it's, where was that place that we got wood? Or we'll we'll, we'll probably in the, on the Facebook group will let you know the exact coordinates and the name of the place to get good firewood. We know where to get that firewood. Yep. It's a decent price. It's like what is it like ten dollars a box, but it's good. It's good wood. Oh, it burns. And they great. and they give you good. Um, What's it called? Uh, Kinlan and oh yeah, they're really nice. Good restaurants. Um, I like to go to, you can say who you like. I like a uh, times three restaurant. Which one do you like there? Well, I like times three and I liked uh, Karen's and oh, Karen's yeah. has recently moved this, yeah. this season. She's moved, uh, she's gotten her own uh, building, I think it is. She moved across the street, so I, I haven't been there yet, but I'm right. anxious to try her, too. Yeah, and sometimes if I need Wi-Fi, I'll go to McDonald's. Probably have to go there quite a bit. Go to McDonald's. I think there's a Burger King around there, too. You can get good Wi-Fi there. Or and the Pilot uh, Truck Stop is there. The Pilot, and you can get showers there, although they're like $16, but I hear they're nicer. The, the laundromat isn't a bad shower. It's just that it's not like real modern. They just, it, it's, yeah. But it's a shower. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi to Jerry. Jerry's there at the yeah, yeah. Main Street laundromat. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a he's a good Joe. Yeah. Um, let's see, I think we've covered, oh, etiquette, etiquette. Now, of course, we're gonna probably be parking a little bit closer to each other. Um, during the meetup, but and a general rule is do not park close to people when you're out there. It's a good etiquette. And you're going to find people with generators and uh, class A's and class C's that like to run their motors and they can be noisy with generators, um, right. which is especially sometimes hard for me because I'm, I'm trying to film, you know, off and on. So, and another thing too, I want to let you know, um, I'll be uh, doing some van tours. So, and if you are thinking about getting a YouTube channel started, let's do it, feed people, now's the time. You're gonna want a van tour, and that way people can find out who you are and get started and subscribe. So you need to contact me, whether it be on Facebook group or leave a comment, or actually on my website, and I've got places, my phone number, text me, and just tell me who you are and that you're interested in a van tour. And so when I'm there, I plan on doing quite a bit. So I want to see what you got. Just show what we got to show and tell. Everyone will want to see your rig and what you've done. I Everyone's know, always I know. looking for a great new idea and they love the van tours. And I'm sorry, we're uh, in the path of, yeah. of the jets. We're at the park. Yeah. Yeah, no. We're going to be here still in Tucson until the first of the year. Well, I think that about wraps up. If you have any more questions, leave in the comments and we'll address it. We'll probably do a couple more of these and we'll talk about things maybe we missed out. But we want to get everybody acclimated to Quartzsite. We've talked about it so much. Quartzsite is a little town. It's nothing for me to say, well, what is Quartzsite? I don't understand. Well, Quartzsite's a town and there's a lot of history to it. Maybe the next time we'll tell you mm -hmm. about the history with the camels. What's with the camels in Quartzsite? To give but, you a quick idea, I believe Quartzsite has 3,500 residents, full-time, basically full-time residents, 3,500. In January and February, people have said it grows to a million. Well, does, I don't know about that. But and then we've got, oh, we got to talk about, so let's save this for next week. We'll talk more about the big tent. We got the big tent. Oh, we got, yeah. oh, oh yep. mineral show. Oh my gosh. We still got so much more to talk about, don't we? And something else that's happening this year that what? didn't happen last year. What? Our Canadian friends, the border is open. They're pouring across the border it's and headed be for even more crowded, everybody. So it's, yeah. it's going to be uh, busy. That's it's for sure. Be busy, but I believe a lot of people. You know, it just kind of clean out a little bit after January. Oh, it does. They yeah. like they descend. 
and then they all go away. Yeah. So I'm thinking during our meetup, that's why I wanted it later, everybody, because I kind of know the schedule, and I think people might be just a little bit calming down around that time. A so, little bit. A little anyway. bit. Okay. <laughs> so until our next one, bye. Bye-bye, guys. Say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs> Spock it. Whoop. Whoop. Spock it. And lock it. Lock it. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to hold and press it. It goes down to low, medium, turbo. It's very simple. They're all kind of the same. It's just a little bit um, higher lumens. And now I'm going to, by turning it off, you just click it. There. Now you click it on. It, it has a memory. It remembers. Now I'm going to press. It's on medium now. I'm going to turn it off. Turn it on. It remembers where I turned it off at. Yeah. And if you just hold and press it while, when it was off and you hold and press it, you've got firefly. It's just a little, you can see that, just a little bit of light. Yeah. I like through night. This feels good in my hand. I kind of like the small ones, but this is pretty darn nice. Here's my extra small one. Let's see. Firefly. I like that. Turn it off. Firefly. Okay, turn it on. Hold and press. Medium. These are powerful lights. This is the TC20 V2. I'll leave the link below. Let's get this over here. The guest of honor. I'll leave the link for this and leave any uh, coupon codes in there too, down in the description. I like it. You know I love Through Night. I like them. Through Night. So get you through the night. You guys in Courtside, when you go to Courtside, if you're new to boondocking and new to the nomad life, you need a flashlight. Oh yeah, you need a flashlight. So make sure that you use Through Night. Whether it be big or small or whatever size you want. There you go.